1980, which is actually before I was born, there was a movie called Airplane, which some of you may have seen. You probably already know the story, but it has to be told at an induction of Jewish sports legends. Of course, the passenger in first class asked the flight attendant, do you have anything light to read? The flight attendant hands the passenger a very small pamphlet and says, how about this, Jewish sports legends. <laughs> Tonight, we are going to add to that very small pamphlet, but as Dan just said, we're going to make a very serious statement about being a Jewish athlete in Southern California. You know, God works in mysterious ways, and this is my first induction ceremony on the board, and it happens that my wife, Rabbi Guzik's first cousin, Ross Sinclair, is also an honoree. So it's really a family affair. But I say that because her grandparents, Ross, your grandparents, taught us that creating strong family bonds and faith is learned through our own Judaism. And those values can be taken everywhere and anywhere. For a team, as all of you know, is much more than individuals, but a great team is always called a family. Solomon Schechter, one of the first rabbis in the United States of America, he told his students this, and Josh Rawich, this is for you. Hopefully this will uh, hang in Cooperstown one day. He said, I quote, you cannot be a rabbi in America without understanding baseball. <laughs> it's true. Because Solomon Schechter understood over 100 years ago that sports is an integral part of the American way of life, where lessons of Jewish tradition are played out in real time on a court, a field, or a pool. Most of us remember the day when Cal Ripken broke the streak of Lou Gehrig, 2,131 games. That, people said, was endurance. But what is true endurance? 4,000 years. 4,000 years of our Jewish tradition that we know we are part of something greater than ourselves, that our survival, especially over these last nine months, cannot be taken for granted. And each of us, and there's a few of us rabbis here tonight, whether you're a rabbi, an athlete, or a fan, we each have a part to do. Four weeks ago, I was in Israel. I walked the land, I met the people that went through the most horrific day in our history since the Holocaust. I spoke to survivors of October 7th and families of hostages that are families that are still in captivity. And each of them told me the same thing. They simply want to feel normal again. I will never forget visiting Kibbutz Niroz, literally the border of Gaza, where half of its members were either murdered or held hostage. I walked into a completely charred house, and the only thing I remember is something that I saw in the living room. It was the young boy's soccer cleat. A week after that trip, the coach of the men's Israeli national flag football team which is trying to compete for a bid in the 2028 Olympics here in LA, came to Sinai Temple. The coach, Jonathan Curran, who grew up in the US, made Aliyah. He told us that in the most recent European championships, just a month ago in Germany, his team, Israel, was not allowed to wear the uniform that said Israel. There were to be no flags and no mention of that country. So instead, they called themselves Team Ariel, after Ariel Bibis one of the young babies still held captive. Out of 40 teams in the European Championships, who do you think won? Team Ariel. <laughs> and 10 out of the 12 players on that men's team went back to Israel, changed their Team Ariel uniform into an IDF uniform so that we can celebrate Jewish athletes here tonight in Southern California. This year, more than any, as Dan said, in our lifetime, we must be sure to take our Judaism as serious as our athleticism. We must ensure that your success as strong Jews in sports translates to a strong Jewish identity, that young kids today who are afraid to wear a Jewish star in their public schools can be proud to wear their Jewish uniforms as proud as you are to wear your jersey. And as Jews, we must give gratitude to our allies who are also proud to stand by our side. And so with that, I cannot end without mentioning the presence of my new friend, who was introduced to me by Dan Goldberg, and that, of course, is Coach Jenny Johnson-Jordan from UCLA Beach Volleyball. Coach Jordan, just weeks after October 7th, came to our synagogue at Sinai Temple 
and told her father Rayford Johnson's story of blessed memory, not about Olympics, but about faith. That when he lit the Olympic torch in 1984, most of you know that he wore his cross, but he also wore something else. He wore a Jewish star. In gratitude to the Jewish community who inducted him as the first African American into a fraternity at UCLA. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Rayford Johnson, and your family. As I begin each podcast of Rabbi on the Sidelines, I say this We are here to celebrate the intersection of sports and faith, not to talk about the box score or the trade deadline, but to talk about what's in your heart and soul. Records are meant to be broken, but our Jewish identity is meant to be eternal and forever. Mazal Tov, congratulations to our inductees, Ami Yisrael Chai. Yeah. Uh, huh? I know there's bread on your table, so you can join me in, this, in the blessing over the bread, the motzi, Baruch, Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, HaMotzi, Lechem, Min HaAretz. Enjoy. <laughs> 